Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard, and this is a new episode talking a little bit more about JD Hall today. All right, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Lots of new subscribers. Uh, thank you. You don't, I don't expect you to go back and watch a bunch of videos where I talk more about this or that or the other. Um, so I like to let everybody know so we're all on the same page. I am a husband and a father. I'm just a regular guy um, pastoring a church here in Kentucky. I did go to seminary, graduated a few years ago. And the Lord is good. He really is. It's hard to see it sometimes. And I know you can attest to that, I'm sure. Drop a comment. Tell me what you're maybe struggling with, what you want me or others to pray for. It always um, helps in knowing that you're not alone. I think that's probably the biggest thing in our culture is to think that you are alone, that you're the only person struggling. My trusty sidekick, he's always reliable. But I, I, I'm, t- I'm tired of the pendulum of either this is terrible and fundamental as this, everything's bad, there's a demon under every rock, That's you can't watch that, you can't do that, you can't eat that, you can't go there, you can't drink that, you can't do this. And then this other of just, well, live and let live, liberty man, just freedom in Christ, bro, right? We're talking about J.D. Hall because, well, he's in the news, um, and that's what this show is, is, is more of a topical show about the church and the culture and being against that situation but for its sake that's contramundo promundo kind of the impetus the foundation of that just latin for being against the world for the world i'm richard against the world richard contramundo and so that's why this channel is what it is i've also got uh, contra talk which is a talk show which i'm actually going to be doing a separate channel for that entirely in the coming weeks so look out for that a little bit more information later on so jd hall is a discernment blogger, quote unquote, um, polemics reporter. And he is not the only one. There's Capstone Report. There's Reformation Charlotte. Uh, Now there's Protestia, which Protestia actually just morphed and came from Pulpit and Pen. So Pulpit and Pen isn't a thing anymore. And I never really was super into it, to be totally honest. And I think it's helpful. I think you can benefit from it. But at the same time, I think it can get a little tiring. It's kind of like, you know, you all know Alex Jones. Alex Jones, yeah, and he's like, ah, he's got the shaved head. Now, he's been right about a lot of stuff recently, right? You know, 10, 20 years ago, uh, it's Looney Tunes. You know, and you're like, this guy's crazy. And then, again, it gets a little closer, and this guy gets elected, and this thing happens, and you're like, uh, maybe, maybe there are lizard people running the world. I don't know. There aren't. But there's probably demon-possessed people running the world. I do believe that. So, like, J.D. Hall is kind of like the Alex Jones of Christendom. (laughs) I don't know if you'll like that or not. It doesn't really matter. I don't mean it really is an insult per se, uh, but it's also not a compliment. This isn't a dig on J.D. Hall, but I did my last video last week. Now, at that point, it seemed that there was just some kerfuffles about his stuff happening at the church and Xanax and things. Yeah. Xanax is a very addictive drug. It very, it very much is. I've never been addicted uh, except to Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, that's the junk I'm talking about. It's so cheesy. They used to talk like that in the 70s and 80s. Just get a high on Jesus. But it's an addictive drug. <laughs> it's an addictive drug. It just is. And it's it's prescribed, overly prescribed. You know, I'm not an expert, but that's what people say. Whether that's true or not, doesn't really matter. That's what's said. So we're just going to roll with that. But it wasn't just Xanax. It's other things, too. We're going to look at the article now. Uh, Christian Post is not a <clears throat> discernment blog, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Uh, I, I mean, it, it, it's it's a real middle of the road, kind of like Christianity today. You, you want to think that these are very non-biased, but everybody's biased. Everybody's biased. You, you live, you're a human being, you have a bias. Where you're from, male or female, how old you are, 
when you came to Christ, if you're a Christian, if you're, if you didn't come to Christ, but maybe you have some familiarity and you, maybe you, you professed Christ when you were younger. Now you don't, I mean, we have a bias. So Christian post is very much, it leans definitely left. I wouldn't say it's, it's not uh, religion news services. JD Hall's former church says he's embezzled money, physically assaulted wife and son. So mark this real quick. Again, I'm not doing this to attack JD Hall or gossip. This isn't a gossip. Right, because first of all, gossip means it's hidden, and you're talking about somebody behind their back. It's not public. Well, this is public, so it's not gossip. So don't call it gossip. I had I've had a few people on the other video. What's the point in this video? What, why are you doing this? Biblically speaking, blah 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 blah. Well, ironically, what's the point in JD Hall's stuff? We're gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. He's not rejected Christ publicly. Now, by their fruits, you'll know them. Right. It's hard to say. I mean, look at guys like Ravi Zacharias or Carl Lentz or others that have fallen. There's all sorts of different levels of unbelief. We're going to look at a few scripture passages. There's, you know, scores of them, hundreds, probably hundreds and hundreds that we could look at. I'm just going to look at a few. Last month, Fellowship Baptist Church announced the removal of pastor as in uh, as Pat Hall as pastor in light of his abuse of Xanax, alleging in June 27th statement that he had dependency above his prescribed dosage. This happens though, a lot. And so some people are like, well, you know, he's not fit for ministry. He can never be restored. And I thought that's a little harsh. I mean, is that really what we're dealing with here? Like you get abused, you get stuck on Xanax, you've been on this. Uh, somebody said it was for depression. Somebody else said it was for anxiety. I'm not a doctor. And really, let's be frank here. The doctors don't even know either. Most of them are just legal drug dealers. Uh, case in point. And so church statement also stated that the decision to remove Hall known for his scathing criticisms of Christian leaders and now defunct pulpit and pen. Well, it's not defunct. It's still up. And it actually changed to protestia. At least it kind of merged with it. So that's, that's again, you have, you have to read with a worldview that knows what's happening and who was talking, right? If you listen to Richard Dawkins, you don't know anything Richard Dawkins. And you're like, oh, this guy's just a really good scientist. He's not. But if he was, he's supposedly a biologist, but it's like, but you have to know where he's coming from. And when he starts talking about God and starts mocking Christians, you're like, well, this guy's not a very good, what does that have to do with science? It doesn't exactly. So, you know, Christian post is left of center. They're not a charitable towards seeking the truth, trying to be um, exposing the lies, at least in the leftism. Maybe they're still trying to seek the truth. I don't want to assume their motives, but you know, it's defunct. Well, that's a way to frame the argument. Caleb Snodgrass, what a great last name, Elder Fellowship Baptist Church, been serving the role approximately four years, told Christian Pros Friday. There was an incident on June 5th with Hall's wife, Mandy, physically abused her and her son. Okay. So right there, we're just going to stop right there. That's a whole different ballgame. Right. Hiding and being, you know, kind of relinquishing yourself, being a recluse. And, ah, oh, man, I just got a lot of stress, got a lot of anxiety, got a lot of, you know, I, I'm taking this. Maybe I've taken more than I should. Right. Any of us who have had alcohol probably drank more than you should. You got drunk. You either threw up. Maybe it was in your BC days. If you're a Christian, it's not wise. It's easy to overdo it. Right. We're human beings. We like indulging. Well, gluttony, we were talking about that. Nobody talks about that because, you know, we live in America, right? But how often do we overeat? How often are our stomachs and they're just like, oh, man, too much, right? Well, that's a sin, too. Let's be real here. Why did I take those off? I need these to read. That night, so June 5th, so about a month and a half ago, Mandy calls some of the deacons over. She kicks J.D. Hall out. Allegation, he's also embezzled $10,000. Church filed with the Sydney Police Department on June 23rd. June 5th incident, Hall was allegedly committed assault with a weapon described as a knife slash cutting instrument. He also alleged committed strangulation of a partner or family member inside the home. Strangulation? Like I would think, that, I mean, attempt, unless he killed the guy, which I doubt would say that if he did. This is, I mean, this is bad. This is bad. This is way worse. But I think it's important. And I hope there's some encouragement here that we can at least look at 
um, coming out of this and what we can pull. Because if nothing else, we can understand what is going on for us. How do we understand this for us, for you, man, woman of God? And I know there's some Christians, most Christians are the audience, uh, just because, I don't know, that's how it works out. YouTube kind of puts us in our own little boxes. Um, but even for non-Christians, somebody who's like, well, I'm not really sure about Jesus, this whole church thing, this guy's a hypocrite. He is a hypocrite. He is sinning. This is wicked. I'm going to call this man out as his polemics report. This is wicked. This is sin. He shouldn't abuse his wife. This is not what men do. This is not what God calls people to do. And we will look here in a moment of what that means, what that really truly looks like, biblical leadership, fidelity to your family and your wife, your children, and so on. Being addicted to something that's wrong. Now, does the Bible talk about substances? Well, it does talk about strong drink. It talks about wine. Wine is a mocker, this and that. Doesn't mean you can't have wine. Sorry, fundamentalists. We're going to, you know, we're going to disagree there. Jesus made real wine in John 2. He made the best wine. There's all these other instances, wine to gladden your heart. But if you are abusing it, that's the thing. You're abusing it. Do you abuse food? Do you drink too much soda? Did you eat a McDonald's this last week? I mean, come on. Just because it doesn't say anything about McDonald's or Burger King or In-N-Out or Whataburger doesn't mean anything. What it means is our heart and our reliance upon the word and God himself. We didn't know how bad the addiction was. I didn't either. When I did my last video, I stand corrected. Like I said, one of the other commenters, oh, he's a wolf in wolf's clothing. He's terrible. Why would you this and this and this? I wasn't really defending J.D. Hall. I was merely asking the question, is there something else that we need to do? Is, is, is there, is this it? I mean, we, there's a, you know, uh, like blasphemy, the Holy spirit, which of course is unbelief. Now there's some inference. Yes. And when Justin Peter said that it seemed like it was just the abuse of the Xanax. Now I could be wrong. Maybe he knew about all these things already and I missed it. Sure. That's very, very possible. And I stand corrected on that. He's not allowed to go back home. So this is, again, this is sad. Like this grieves me because this man's a pastor. He's very well known. If you don't know who he is, that's okay. But he's very well known, far well more well known than probably the average Christian is. I mean, certainly than the average Christian and even, you know, in the higher ups of, of just Christendom in general, there's kind of big Eva, the cool kids over here that write for all the cool blogs. J.D. Hall never did that, but they know who he was and he called them out and they, you know, mock him and this and this and this. So he's, he's in there, and there's, for lack of a better word, there's levels, right? Good, bad, or otherwise, that's what it is. I'm just, you know, I'm down at this bottom level of like, you know, nothing. But he's up here. People know who he is. And so this makes it exponentially worse. <clears throat> His church family initially wanted to take rehab, but he didn't. You have to know it's a month-long process. Yes. Snodgrass didn't go into details on the embezzlement. So now he's embezzling money, too. So we've got an addiction, number one embezzlement number two or you know abuse if you want to call it that just in the order of writing and then embezzlement that's i mean now we've got three strikes and you're out so i'm going to stand and say no this man should not be a pastor anymore uh this is too grievous this is too much um he should not he should not seek to be a pastor he should not seek to be a polemics writer he should not seek to be a leader in Christ's church at all We're trying to minister, but there's a lot of anger there. And yeah, I mean, sadly there is. And I think, you know, you, you have to be to a degree. I mean, he's angry at the culture and he's angry at the church and right. I think some very well uh, placed anger. There's a lot of leftists. There's a lot of squishy, mushy middle people. There's a lot of people that see the culture and they want to play footsie with the culture. They want to make things so much cooler and better and just, Jesus is slick and we're cool though. Don't just come to it. No, no, no. Just, I'm just like you. I'm just like you. You know I mean? We see this with all sorts of names. They do it all the time. And we think, oh, why? Why are you doing that? Why don't you take a stand on that? Why aren't you rejoicing at the overturning of Roe v. Wade? Why aren't you rejoicing at this victory? And why aren't you lamenting that loss? <clears throat> Very small church, usually 50 to 100 people but it's down 50%. And here it is. Snodgrass responds with a solid no after he saw a future for Hall in ministry. There's no real hope for that, he says. Maybe 15, 10, 15 years down the road when things are so totally different. 
but I don't think he'll be welcome back. And I, I mean, he wouldn't be right again. Maybe, you know, obviously the Lord can work. We see Paul who was Saul domestic terrorist, right? But it, he wasn't in the faith. And that's, that's the trouble where you have a terrorist. And this, that's what Saul was. And then he comes, he gets literally has to get knocked off his horse, blinding light, three days blind, like all this stuff for him to see because his heart is so hard, so calloused, but God used him. But he also suffered for his sin, didn't he? Right? How much, I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. I think that's Acts 9, late 9, later in chapter 9. And, you know, that, that matters, right? But when you're a Christian, and you know the right thing to do and don't do it to him, it is sin, James tells us. That's that's a whole different scenario altogether. Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from flesh, fleshly lusts which wage war against your soul. Keep your behavior excellent among the Gentiles. So in the thing that in which they slander you as evildoers, they may, because of your good deeds, as they observe them, glorify God in the day of visitation. 1 Peter 2, 11 and 12. Therefore, an overseer, I got an extra A there for notes, pardon that, must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, which falls in line with drug abuse, which includes uh, alcohol and weed, Xanax, methamphetamines, cocaine, whatever, right? Oh, a pastor would never use cocaine, really? Not saying I have, don't, don't imply that. Not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle. Not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well, with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he take care of the church of God? Yes, I agree with Justin Peters. I now do. Uh, so I recant. Uh, what I said last week on the last J.D. Hall video. But this is where I didn't know. So make an excuse, but it is what it is. No, he's a lover of money. He's embezzling money. He's not keeping his children well. He's quarrelsome. He He's fighting. He's angry. He's not sober-minded. Maybe he's able to teach. Well, I never listened to a sermon, so I don't know. But yes, this is not, not good. Self-control, nope. Respectable, probably not. Violent, not violent, but gentle. I mean, like strike three on like on this on the classic elder overseer pastor qualification. And notice, please, men, especially if you're striving to be a pastor or you are a pastor, uh, but even in general, you're still overseeing your family. You're not abdicating that and you know, farming that out to the local church, whether it's 50 people or 5,000 people, and it's a great church. You go to MacArthur's church, for example. Oh, he's such a, uh, this and the discipleship. No, no, you're still the discipler. You're still the teacher. You're still the one who should be all these things. Husband of one wife above reproach. That still applies to you. Now, these things are the standard for a man who wants to be a shepherd, an overseer, pastor. They're all the same. Psalm 119. This might be less known. Might be thinking it went somewhere else, but I will keep on obeying your instructions forever and ever. I will walk in freedom for I have devoted myself to your commandments. I will speak to kings about your laws and I will not be ashamed. I will not be ashamed. How I delight in your commands. How I love them. I honor and love your commands. I meditate on your decrees. Meditate on your decrees. I love your commands. I will speak of them. I will not be ashamed of them. I will walk in freedom. Notice there's freedom to obey the law. Right? You're driving down the road, 65, and you're going 65. Maybe maybe 68. Let's be real here. But you're not going 90. Not only because you're going to get a ticket, but it's unsafe. Right? It's foolish. You shouldn't be doing that. Oh, what about, what about, I got a, I got a brand new Mustang. I got a Corvette. I got to open it up. Do you? Since when? Why are you walking? Why are you not walking in freedom? Why are you not walking in obeying the instructions? J.D. Hall, was he doing this? No, he wasn't, obviously. Why? Because he fell into sin. And I urge you, 
stranger, alien, sojourner in this world. You have the world, the culture, the flesh, your own flesh, your own sin. And I'm talking to men and women here and the devil assailing you relentlessly. You need the local church. You need to read. You need to memorize scripture. You need to be part of the fellowship. You need to read good books. You need to forsake most entertainment, especially these days. But even in general, I mean, let's be real here. I think we need to all apologize to a lot of the fundamentalist people that we might have mocked in the 70s, 80s, 90s, whenever we grew up. Oh, yeah, that's never going to happen. Yeah, he's yeah, right. He's not going to turn it. He's not going to turn him gay. He's not going to turn him into a girl. He's not going to repent uh, or recant and, and turn from the faith. They're not worshiping Satan. They're not pedophiles. Like All of those things are yes, 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 yes. Oh, oh. Yeah, mainstream media, Hollywood, big, 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 big education. Oh, uh, the government. Oh, oh, they are really corrupt. Oh, dang it. I'm sorry. Like, we need to apologize to uh, some of our fundamentalist brothers and sisters in our grandma who told us to not go there, not do this. You need to obey God's instruction. You need to obey his law, not for righteousness. Again, notice it's not for righteousness. This is walking. Why? to honor and love and meditate on your decrees. Why? So you can walk in freedom. So you can be above reproach, as Peter says. Or as Timothy is being written to by Paul. Obey the law. Not for righteousness sake, because you don't deserve it. You're not earning it. Once you're in the fold, once you're a sheep in the great shepherd, the good shepherd of your soul, once you're with him, walk in the newness of life that he provides that he fills you with his spirit. Walk in that way. Don't forsake it. Don't mock his law. I hope that makes sense. And if you don't know Christ, keeping the law is not going to do anything. It's just going to condemn you. Jesus says, I came to fulfill the law, not to abolish it, but to fulfill it. Jesus also promised that we promised we will have trial and tribulation in this world, but fear not, I have overcome the world. So when you turn to Christ, you overcome the world. You walk in liberty, as Psalm 119 says. You walk in the freedom. Because he's washed you and he makes you new. Not your own goodness, not your own righteousness. And that's the difference. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation for all who believe. But you have to believe. You strictly walk with the bucket, the giant, or you drag, if you got a lot, you drag the dead carcass of your own sin, the slimy, greasy nastiness, the stuff that you find in the bottom of your sink and worse still in your oven and the oil and after an oil change in your car, all of that together at the bottom of the sewer, all of that is like your sin. And you simply bring it to the cross. You don't bring anything else. The Bible says we're sick, we're dead, uses those as different idioms. We need to repent, calling everyone everywhere. Jesus' first words in the Gospel of Mark. Today is salvation. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. If you don't know Christ, turn to him. He'll take you. J.D. Hall can be restored to be a Christian, being in a church, but I don't think he should not only not be a pastor, certainly not. After all this, more things and this character and how long this is going on. No, not trustworthy at all. Even if he's fully restored, as it were. Uh, he shouldn't write. He should go be a rancher. He should go sell cars. He should go pick up a night gig and, and be an accountant. I don't know. But he should no longer be in pastoral ministry. So again, I hope you found this helpful. Please uh, like and share if you don't mind and um, drop a comment. Again, tell me how, where you're from. If you haven't, I know a lot of people do that. I do ask that periodically. Uh, I've got a lot of new subscribers and also just how we can pray for you in general. So I'll take care. Have a great day. My goal here again is be helping you be against the world. <laughs>